Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna play Battle for Middle Earth 1 in a 2v2 match on the beautiful map Mouth of the Endwash. We are picking the random faction, let's hope for the best. Everyone is random and Mouth of the Endwash is a quite big map so we need to be extremely active macro wise. And we are gonna get to play the Rohan faction, alright, and our ally is Gondo, not bad, not bad. I like this matchup a lot. Because um, this matchup, Rohan and Kondo combination is quite mobile. I will try to get some Rohirrim Arches on the field later on, but early on I will also need some Rohirrim because, as mentioned before, this is a quite big map, guys. Okay, let's see if we can win this one. I like this map, I was not playing this map for a really, really long time. And I know you guys are enjoying the 1v1s, but I hope also you're gonna enjoy the 2v2s. So we're gonna start with two farms and recruit the Mary immediately. Pick up the draft from the spellbook, use it. Let's wall check. And this is FOL, which means good faction. And this is FOD, which means evil faction. Because our mouse is not jumping, as you can see. Now we're gonna grab this mill uh, or farm in the front side. Make some extra peasants because we wanna grab also the farms behind our base. And we're gonna send Mary to the top right side of the map. Alright, so actually, let's try to focus down the evil faction first together with our ally Gondor player. Set some waypoint, and actually, um, yeah, we are against a good faction, so we might need some extra peasants now. But I'm gonna try to avoid that because I want to get my Rohirrim on the field as soon as possible. Now we're also gonna buy this farm for free, which is quite nice. And then we have to hack the wall and actually move downstairs. Only against Isengard, he can always pick the Elven Wood and use it. And let's get that also with the Hobbit Mary. Beautiful. Alright, um, I don't know the enemy faction just yet, it might be Gondo, it might be also Rohan, we shall see. And my ally was already using the Elven Wood, okay. A little bit too early, I need to say. Now we're gonna use these peasants to get this, oh, there is some peasants, alright, alright. I have to buy this one and then actually try to micro with the Hobbit. And I'm gonna show you guys how, how you can actually micro your Hobbit later on if he will try to face against me. Okay, let's see how much damage we will be able to deal now. Okay, we should be able to defend ourselves against one peasant only. He's splitting his peasants, which is, in my opinion, a mistake. Alright, let's just keep chasing them. Use the swords now. And get this farm, shall we? Alright, he's choosing not to fight, which is smart, because I can out-micro that one easily. I'm also the on-host player in this one, guys. Which is giving me a nice reaction time. Because in BFME games, it's very important to actually be on host. That's gonna give us always a nice advantage. Let's fight because he has no more war chant. Alright. Ideally, you wanna focus the mill, but I'm assuming we have many, many units around this side and we can fight them because Urukai were badly damaged. We have enough money now for the stable. But I need to micro with the Hobbit first. Hit this farm. There we go. Give him draft. So they have some weapons, go for the stable next. Oh, be careful here. Hit and run, hit and run and then get cloaked. Oh, nice one. Our peasants are level 2, that's huge. Okay, nice, there we go. We were also able to defend this side, which is pretty nice. Oh, our hobbits, our hobbits. Uh, okay. Micro, micro, micro. Hit and run. This way we can micro them and actually take down the entire battalion just like that. I'm gonna try to send them downstairs, alright. Uh oh, uh, I'm not gonna make extra peasants for this one, I'm gonna actually try to get my Rohirrim on the field first. Okay, the mill has been taken down which is quite nice. Now we can try to attack this one at the bottom right side. Because we know that Isengard has currently only one mill and we have many many farms on the field as you can see. One, two, three, four farms under our control which is quite nice. That's the reason why our uh, Rohirrim are gonna be also very cheap. Hit and run, hit and run. Alright, get one more Rohirrim on the field. We have a lot of money actually, guys. We have to defend now ourselves against the peasants. We need to kinda avoid the trample. So we're gonna press S, so we can... Oh, but there is a Hobbit. Oh, I'm walking into the works, <laughs> my bad. 
Now I need to trample them. Let's go, just like that. And we also have to kill the Hobbit Mary. Oh, oh that was close, that was close. That was close, I was not paying attention. And also our peasants died for no reason, unfortunately. Now we have to get this farm back. And don't demolish this one because it's only a worker who's attacking this one. Okay, um, we're gonna make some more Rohirrim. And I'm actually gonna try to save for Eomir, guys. I feel like Eomir is so nice in this matchup. Later on, once we get some level 4 and unlock the Horse Lord leadership from the level 4 ability, it's gonna increase the DPS and also the combat, exp combat experience from our you know, horses, not only from the Rohirrim, but also from the Allied Gondor horses later on, which can be very nice. By this farm. And try to creep now, the Vorklinger. When it comes to creep the Vorklinger, I'm gonna show you guys, you wanna always attack the Vorks first. So I'm gonna lure them away, as you can see, from the lair. But I need to pay attention around the other side. And before and actually always kill the Vorks first with the Rohirrim, because if you focus down on the lair instead, you might lose them all. And the Rohirrim are quite strong, they can easily take down this Vorks and then, you know, the Vorklinger right after. We have enough power points for the heal, let's go for that. Nice one, now we have some sustain, which is quite nice. Kill this farm, don't demolish this farm. Alright, beautiful, he was forcing, he was, he was forced to demolish this one, uh, one by the way. Do not give us any more power points and experience points. Eomir is on the field, get him mounted and send him right there to the Rohirrim, alright? Nice one. Okay, my ally is not doing bad, I see he has still the two farms under his control. This spot at the top right side in our base, we're gonna save that for the for the armory. And now try to get our Eomia level 4, shall we? Armory now. Actually, you know, getting a Rohirrim Archer now I think is not bad because that's gonna be a nice defense against the enemy Rohirrim. Wait with the spear until the work is a little bit lo uh, lower, now we can one shot him. Make sure that Eomia gets the last hit. We're gonna do the same situation also with the Leia, just to make sure that Eomir is the one who's gonna get all the experience. And he's gonna be almost level 3 after this one. And once again, level 4 is a huge power spike for the Horse Lord of Rohan. Alright, that's gonna be nice now. Bring all the. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna be careful here with the Rohirrim Archers though. I mean, that's. Oh, never mind, that's our only normal Rohirrim. Okay, <laughs> I was kinda confused for a second, my bad. Eomir is almost level 3 now, which is good. Demolish this, go for the armory next. Get the money, which is gonna be nice. Buy this farm back. Beautiful, looks nice. If I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, guys, there is also a work layer close to our base. So we might, in the worst case scenario, grab this work layer in the backside of the fortress. And get Eomir to level 4 this way. Armory, I'm cash looting so much. Place them down. We have also some Rohirrim Arches. Where are, where are the Rohirrim Arches? I don't find them. Oh, there they are. Now we can use them actually to maybe catch this enemy Rohirrim and kill them. Let's send this one to the well. They can sustain over time. And use the spear throw one more time. And actually check now this area for the work layer. Because if we get one more work layer now and kill all the works plus the layer with the Eomir, we should be able to get him level 4, which is gonna be nice. Oh, oh. I might turn now and try to fight this one. Rohirrim Arches are dealing a lot of damage, we wanna use the Wedge Formation to increase our DPS. Spear Throw is on cooldown. Oh, he's trying to kill Hobbit Mary. But he might lose his units for that. Alright, we don't even need to use the Spear ability, I believe. There we go. We can use Spear maybe? Oh, never mind. We can't kill him anyway and he will be anyway able to get away. No need to waste our Spear Throw. Buy all the upgrades because we have so much money. The thing is, we don't want to give too much time to Isengard, because Isengard and, you know, Mordor faction on a map like this, they are quite, skill, you know, scaling quite hard. And our ally has to actually make sure to kill these mills 24-7, but he seems to be focused on the creeping as well, just like us. I mean, we are trying to scale now with the Rohan faction into the mid to late game by getting our Eomir to level 4. There needs to be a work if I'm not mistaken. Let's check. There we go, nice one. And that should be enough now to get our Eomir to level 4. Wait, wait, now we can use it. Now it's gonna one shot him, there we go. Also get the last hit on the second ward if you can with Eomir. Just to make sure that we have enough. 
Oh, send them back. Nice. Aomega got the last hit. Very nice. And we just need to make sure that Aomega gets also the last hit on the layer. And that's going to be enough to make him level 4. Buy the outposts, make wells and statues for the sustained leadership. And make sure that Aomega is the only one who's attacking the layer. Just to make it, you know, 100% sure that we're going to get level 4. Alright, level 4 unlocked. Get the money, Keep which is nice. Keep these okay, beautiful. Now we're gonna get some more Ogiri matches on the field because now we have the leadership from Eomia, the Horse Lord. Means 60% more damage and 50% more combat experience for the allied cavalry units around Eomia. Uh oh, yes, enough, uh, a lot of pikemen on the field. We are a little bit away from getting. Uh, the Elvin Allies summon from the spellbook, but I'm assuming we might actually go for the Elvin Wood instead. We shall see. Depends on the situation, of course. Of I want to make sure that we have actually enough money for Theorin. There we go. And also buy upgrades on our horses to make them stronger and resistant. And then once again, with Theorin being on the field and Eomia being level 4, we will have a lot of leadership for the Rohiri Marchers. And that's going to be one of, the one of the matches we will be able to see. How strong those Rohirrim matches can be if you micro them well and if you actually give them the leadership they are looking for. Okay. You can now demolish this one after buying all the upgrades. Theodian gets mounted the second he comes out. And now we can go for the attack potentially. Archer range to get fire upgrade purchase later on to increase the DPS of our Rohirrim marches. Oh, we need to send some help. That's going for the siege weapons there, really? That's interesting. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Alvin Wood is from our ally, so that means we have additional armor, which is quite nice. Buy this archer so we can get the um, archer range to level 2. All we have to do is be careful with our heroes, because our mounted heroes like Eomi and Theorin are very vulnerable against pikemen. But our hero marches on the other side are going to be able to force the opponent pikemen away. Let's chase them a little bit. But I don't want to. I don't want to overcommit too much. We can now take down this outpost right after. Maybe we can even continue actually going him. But he might have lured, so I'm actually kind of scared a little bit. All right, we're gonna lose this farm. I was not paying attention. Okay, put this archers inside the inside the tower. Of the outpost, now we can keep going with our ally. All right, let's see. How oh, 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 Fiesta! Oh, free, free, free experience points and power points. Maybe we can get our Theodian higher level. Tina, let's go for a trample. Hallelujah, guys! Hallelujah! That's what I like to see. Theodian hits level two, and we are getting on a lot of power points. I'm gonna go for the Alvin Wood here, by the way. And there are you know a lot of pikemen and enemy. Theodian is also on the field. We need to use. Maybe he's gonna use it first, our ally. There we go, nice one. Eomi has to be careful. Heroes, they need to be careful. Oh, he got pinned, our Theodin. We have to use heal. Oh, we sniped his Theodin though, which is nice. With the Rohirrim matches. Rohirrim matches are dealing a lot of damage to the enemy heroes. Bikes are diving in and we are forced to retreat. Oh, Eomi, Eomi, oh my. <laughs> no way. And Wormtong. He catched all our Rohirrim. Oh no. And Theodian died as well. Come on, dude. That's the worst case scenario. We have to now peel back. Invest the money once again into reviving Eomia and Theodian at the same time. The thing is, we can get our Rohirrim back later on. And then we need to try to get away with them. You can see the time remaining is going down. And once it's done, we get the control back of our units. Luckily, I think we didn't lose any battalion, which is very nice. Oh, go back, go back, go back, go back. And Isengard is looking scary. He has Lords, he has Saruman, and he has a lot of pikemen. So we will definitely need fire in order to have the DPS we need to actually be able to burst down these units and heroes in time. Okay. On the bright side, we are able to save our units. On the bad side, however, you know, we lost uh, our heroes, guys. Eomi and Theodin are dead. Hmm. Maybe we can catch them. Maybe he's not paying attention. Rohirrim marches, if you don't know, are a nice counter to Rohirrim as well. Especially when they don't have the horseman shields, they're gonna die quite fast. And let's now fight for the map control, shall we? Because we need to get our farms back. He's fighting us, I think that's fine with me. He needs, he needs to pay attention, otherwise he's gonna die. 
Oh, nice damage dealt. He will be now forced to retreat. But there is no point of of chasing any further. So let's go back to the outpost with the Rohir marches. Keep focusing on the map control because, let, you know, I'm telling you guys every time when we are casting the games, map control is everything. Theoden is going to be the first one. Let's get him mounted immediately. After the fire upgrade, we can also, as I did, and demolish the archer range and go for one more farm instead. Because now we will need a lot of money because we have to eventually recruit many, many more Rohirrim archers, guys. Okay. Buy this one back in time. Theoden is almost level 3, which is quite nice. Level 4 is going to be a huge power spike for our uh, King of Rohan. The Glorious Giant, you know that already is a very effective uh, ability for the Nervi Allied Cavalry units, which is not going to only affect our Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers, but also the Gondor Knights from our ally Galeti, which is quite nice. He's focusing now on the map control as he should. Now we can also maybe buy this outpost here. Okay. Can give them fire now. There we go. They have more DPS. And send them to this outpost around this side. Beautiful. Oh 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 oh. I see. Oh, wait a second. Oh, they are attacking now my outpost, guys. We need to demolish everything in time. Demolish, demolish. Because these buildings are giving so much power points and experience points if you don't demolish them in time. Now we're gonna go for a base rush. Gonna be, we're gonna be able to kill the spike man very very fast. We have enough power points now for the Anduril sword if we need that, but we don't need that because we have no Aragon on the field. I'm assuming we're gonna try to save for the end allies in this matchup. This is gonna open the opportunity for us to actually go for the Rohan base instead and break the wall, you know? Go for the well, for the sustain, buy this farm back. Okay, my ally wants to continue so we can actually spot him a little bit, but we have to also kind of defend this outpost. We have Elven Wood, guys, which is gonna be nice. So maybe with the Elven Wood, we might be able to defend ourselves. Let's see. The statue is not up just yet. But we have lots of leadership, as you can see, right? We have Eomir and Theodin. By Moro here in Marches, shall we? Oh, he's committing. I'm gonna actually try to defend this. I have to use Elven Wood, guys. Oh, there we go. Finally, I can use that. Now he's forced to retreat. We can go for a small trample from the backline. There we go, but don't overcommit. Oh, Fireball, can we save them? Level 4. Oh, that's gonna be close, but still, we're able to save them, which is very nice. Buy this outpost here, make some extra farms on that to get more money. Alright. Now we need to just get some more Rohirrim matches on the field, I believe. Just to be able to, you know, have the DPS we need to burst down. Oh, he's using the Tainted Land, but... My ally, I believe, he has his Elven Wood back. There we go, beautiful. Oh, oh, Gandalf, Gandalf, pick, don't pick. Oh my god, he was almost getting crippled down. <laughs> Be careful with this white wizard. And they can't commit now because the Elven Wood, by the way, if you don't know, is nullifying the entire leadership. So, Eomir level 6, Theoden is almost level 4, guys. Level 4. By the farms, level 4 is gonna be a huge power spike. A huge power spike that's gonna unlock our glorious charge, and we're gonna shine bright like a diamond, and also hits like a truck. Okay. Now let's go for the attack, shall we? Yeah. I think with the attack now, if we actually put Eodin close to our units, we can get potentially the glorious charge unlocked. Nice with a plus here from our ally. Very well done. We have to kill the pikemen, very important. Alright. Oh, he's building. Uh, I think we need to play it slow, kinda, because my Rohir matches, they are strong, yes, but they are very vulnerable against arrows. And we need to be careful to not be actually too greedy. Almost level 4, come on. Couple of more units, there we go. Glorious charge unlocked. Use it immediately. Shine bright like a diamond for the death and glory, guys. Now we are gonna be almost um, invincible and burst even down the Citadel just like that in a couple of seconds. We're here to match. One of them is even level 10 as you can see guys. Lightning Sword is gonna be used from our ally. Um, we, can, we need to try to get down this level 3 furnaces. Where is Isengard? Oh, he's, Theodin is coming, but what is this Theodin doing? He's gonna get one shot that he has to be extremely careful. We have some units around this side by all the upgrades. We have a decent amount of money now. Look, the Spike Man guys are getting melted down. Oh, okay, he actually, what? 
You need to be careful. Did you kill Tyrion? Just like that. <laughs> now we need to go back though, to the well to sustain. Because once again, Rohir marches are a great counter unit to heroes. Especially to a big hero like Tyrion, we can burst him down in a second. Alright, make some more. Uh, we're gonna be command points capped very soon, but we can still keep making units by also this outpost with the Hobbit Mary. And once again, map control is everything, guys. We have right now four farms under our control, and we have almost the power points we need for the for the end allies. I mean, with the end, can we kill a couple of times? Can we get the power points now? Oh, really close! Come on, we can kill some of these units maybe, and then actually try to get the power points we need for the end allies. And now we can go back. Warchan has been beaten as well, which is very nice. Now our, our opponent has no Warchan anymore, which is a huge cooldown. We're gonna pick up the end from the spellbook. Heal up a little bit at the well and then actually go for the base of the Rohan player instead. And that's gonna once again open such a big opportunity for us. Make more Rohirrim now, because we have to keep fighting for the map control. Never give it up, never surrender. Let's break two parts of the wall with two of them each. Because he might be able to repair one of them, so this, un this way our units are not going to get trapped. Okay. Necro them away. And we can try to go inside then, right after. But we need to be careful. Oh, he's coming, but that's a bad thing. He can't fight us here, there is no way. We have so much leadership as you can see. They're one-shotting everything pretty much. And especially our level 10 Rohirrim archers, we have now two of them. Let's go inside, shall we? Use this end to break the gate, and we can go inside now for a little bit of poke damage against the Tita potentially. But Isengard is coming, so... Oh, we need to be careful now. Wormtong? Oh, he was able to take down our... Oh no, we need to be careful now, we have to disengage. Our ends, they're gonna be potentially taken down, but that's fine, because we were still able to break two parts of the wall. Okay. They are burning now. Oof. Not, not the best, but we were able to break down two parts of the wall and also the gate, which is very good. We're gonna get them back very soon. Don't kill them in those kind of situations. Just wait for the for the cooldown to go off. Now we have them back in the business. By this farm. There we go, and actually send them to the top right side, right there, to actually buy the second farm. Aragon is now on the field for more than leadership. Aragon gives us 50% uh, damage. Okay. Our ends are getting killed by this enemy Rohirrim with Tyrion leadership. We can't do anything about that. But we might go for the, in for the base inside once again and force the Isengard's player potentially. Ooh, what am I doing? Tyrion is kind of losing his way for some time, you know, for some time. Kill the Tita if he can. It's gonna take us like 5 seconds only as you can see. The burst damage is real. Alright, oh! Did he? Oh, um, no, I didn't even see lords, man. I'm so blind, guys, sorry for that. I didn't even see lords. Did he use rain or something? No, right? He didn't, I guess. We can kill Saruman, maybe can we kill... Oh, oh my... No way, he survived with 1 HP, we have to peel back now. We have to peel back, Aragorn has to be careful as well, we have to revive Eomea. Once again, luckily, we were able to save our heroes. And freezing rain was active, that's why we have not the damage we need to burst them down in time. We can use Elven Woods maybe? It's not working. Alright. I mean, we can't, I think we can't go inside, but we can actually attack the level 3 farm from outside. Just to poke them and uh, get the power points for the Anduri sword. Okay, one more farm, and the level 3 farms, this is gonna hurt the Rohan player big time, because from them he's getting so much money. And I think Isengard is not paying attention because he's also being attacked at the same time. Oh, okay, that's interesting, he's using the Alvin allies, can we kill Theodin though? Maybe we can turn and kill Theodin, let's try. But our Aragorn, Aragorn might be in trouble. Oh, he's... Okay, never mind. Run, 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 run. <laughs> Glorious charge. Aragorn is tanky. I'm not too much worried about him because we can use the heal from Atelas and the heal from the spellbook. 
And he has also under his sword, plus the Blade Master. So he's gonna be very tanky. We need to wait until Eomi is back in the business at this point. We also need to heal up a little bit because right now we have no leadership, guys. Freezing Rain is negating all the leadership for the entire map. Get our uh, stuff back. We need to be careful here. We need to cancel the banner carry upgrade and actually buy fire first. This way we might have the DPS we need to kill this unit. Oh, 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 oh. I'm actually making a mistake. There are, those elves are actually dealing so much damage. <laughs> no way, dude. I am horrible with my heroes today, guys. Sorry for that. Yodin, Glorious uh, Heal? Okay. We need to use heal now. Can we kill Saruman? That's the question. Aomi is just back in the business. Saruman is getting away. Barely. The crippled duration should be gone and I will try my best to actually keep my Tillion alive. Maybe we can do that. And even kill these combos because they have no leadership right now. But we have also no leadership. Can we get away? I'm trying my best. I know we can't fight this. Okay, Theoden is released from the spell. Run for our life! Oh no! Theoden gets bursted down still. Yomi is now here. But we lost a lot in this fight. Oh, but we have some catapults. Alright, alright. What happened here? I don't even know. Did we lose the match? I think we did. I was not paying attention. And once again, we have to wait for Theoden to come back. Very important. And, and we are also 8 power points only away from the army of the dead, so... Let's see, now we need to make something work before the freezing rain is back up. Because freezing rain is actually hurting us so much, guys. That's unbelievable. Gandalf from our ally. Buy this farm back. And wait for the Theodin to come back on the field. Because we need the glorious charge. My goal, guys, our goal now will be to keep the trebuchets from our ally protected. Because what's gonna happen is the Rohan player from the opening team will try to kill the trebuchets. Because trebuchets are the best counter unit to combos. Combos are not mobile and trebuchets are gonna just one-shot them. What is happening there with the farm? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, my human arches were there forever. So put them inside, eventually. You can make a statue around this side as well, just for the leadership. Uh, which also affects the units inside the outpost, by the way. Okay, now we can move forward. Uh, but we need. I would just like to wait for Theodin now. <clears throat> we have Aragorn leadership, we have Gandalf leadership, we have Eomir leadership. And we will also have the Theodin leadership right after. Let's see if we can make it work. I mean, we have double land, right? So, in the worst case scenario, even if he uses the rain, we can use the land on top of our own catapults. This way the enemy Rohirrim are also gonna lose their leadership bonuses. And we might be able to kill the Rohirrim in time. Okay, so now the siege begins. That's where the fun begins, guys. Many, many, many trebuchets. Okay, Theoden is almost on the field. There we go, beautiful. And get them close to our unit, so we have Glorious Charge available once again. And break the wall, shall we? Okay, looking good so far. I mean, look at our Rohirrim matches. We have le level 10 Rohirrim matches all around the place. And they are hitting very, very, very hard. Trust me. Okay, one part of the wall has been broken, but we need more than that. We need to break at least two parts, so it's easy for us to enter the base and exit the base right after. Okay, that's where the fun begins. Use rain, so we need to use Elvin wood. I need to use it first. Saruman, we need to kill Saruman. There we go. One more hit, there we go, beautiful, Saruman has been taken down. They covered the lands, by my ally recovered the lands. That's still our lands, by the way. And now the Isengard player covers the lands, now we need to peel back from the land because we have no leadership. But the good thing is, now we have leadership back. Because if you step on the enemy, oh, that was a nice and nasty wizard blast here from our ally. Just to make sure to kill all the Rohirrim, just like that. Use heal, here then is level 6, keep our heroes protected, that's very important. Gandalf got crippled down, but there is nothing that can kill him actually. And Eomi is almost level 9, we dealt a lot of damage, we are still quite healthy, and we are also able to save all our Rohirrim arches. Look at our power points guys, we have almost 5 power points collected, which means we are a little bit more than 5 power points away from the army of the dead. But it's still so tricky to enter the space, you know, I, I'm not, I'm actually worried about this one. Maybe I should just go inside, but I'm afraid, because I don't want to lose my highly leveled Rohira marches. Right 
What? He's using Alvin <laughs> allies for that. <laughs> They're not gonna kill our Katas, trust me on that one. All we need to do is kill this Rohirrim, guys. That's all we have to do. And they are dying very fast, trust me. They have so much leadership right now. The still then can't approach us. There is no way. He's gonna get one-shotted. Nice with a plus here. From Gandalf against the elves. And all the enemy Rohirrim are dead. Just like that. Just play it slow. We don't have to rush anything. We don't want to make a mistake which can cost us the game and which can actually turn the game around. Play it slow, play it patient. Very important. I'm saying that and going inside. <laughs> Alright, be careful. Go back, go back, go back. You, can, you see how tricky it is to enter the space because there are many, many possible options and uh, units are entering the way base the way they want. What we can actually, what we can do now, guys, is um, we can maybe retarget the Isengard player, you know? Might not be the... Oh, we need to be careful with our heroes. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Look how much leadership they have, these units. With Theodin, with um, Lords, with Stageway. They're gonna hit very, very hard. Our ends are almost back up. I mean, they are back up pretty much, but I'm not gonna use them. Because the thing is, they're gonna get one-shotted. Okay? Alright. Yeah, now we need to go to Isengard, I believe, right? Just heal up a little bit, and then we're gonna move to Isengard. Because I believe Isengard has almost nothing in his base. Their command points cap, we can't make more units. We can keep this one battalion, but potentially in our um, middle, I mean at the outpost. Because I believe we have enough power now. With this much leadership, Theodin, Eomiam, and also Aragorn. Everything is getting melted down in a second, trust me on that one. We need some help from our ally though, because um, once again, the Rohirrim arches are about damage. They have no tankiness. Kill. Everything is dying in a second. Look how they are. Oh, Aragorn. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Now Gandalf can actually pop off, guys, because Lourdes wasted his uh, cripple on our Aragorn, and there is no way he can kill Aragorn. Aragorn has so much to stain. Atelas, Pleatmaster, is tanky. Oh, he used Glorious Charge there? Alright, that's interesting. Now Glorious Charge is not available and the base is going down. If leadership still, Aragorn is a little bit far away because he's crippled down, but that's fine. Everything is getting one-shotted, even level 3 furnaces. Watch this now. Look the damage. <laughs> Do you see that, guys? That's crazy, right? Should we go for Death and Glory? Would like to see Death and Glory, guys? Let's go for it, shall we? For death and glory, cloud break is being used. I think that's from our ally. Look, the power points are rising. He's up last. He didn't hit anything, but it's fine. Because there is nothing left anymore. Just kill all the buildings. I think Isengard is defeated now. If he has no outpost, of course. They are so strong, guys. Look, the Theodin. <laughs> Just getting one-shotted. Level 10, Ruhirim Arch is glowing, shining bright like a diamond. Level 10, Theodin as well. Level 10, Eomir. Almost level 8, Aragorn. The power of Rohan, the power of the Ruhirim Archers. Just like that. The base is going down. We have one more battalion here and we can actually group them all together. We are only one power point away from getting the army of the dead. And now we can actually rotate to Rohan instantly. We have so much money. Actually, let me buy this castle. Let me buy this castle. Oh, Yo has been defeated. I think that's the Rohan player. He left the game. That means Isengard is still alive. Okay, no, but not any longer because we're gonna, we're gonna be able now to finish off the space. During this fight, we should also get the power points we need for the army of the dead summon. Get all the farms here. Money, 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 you know. It's always nice to have some money in the bank, as you guys know. Hopefully, as you guys know. <laughs> okay, and summon, there we go. We can commit now fully. Break the wall. Oh, there are some... <laughs> what? Look at this now, guys. The towers are gonna get one-shotted from Rohan. Watch this damage from the Rohirrim. Do you see that? Do you see that? Just like that. Before it's building up, it's getting one shot. Bam! <laughs> this damage is crazy, trust me. With this much leadership, with level 10, we are hitting very hard. Now we have AOD. Pick it up. We can use it now also inside the base and kill everything. You, there we go, nice one. 
In that scheme, I don't think they can turn the scheme any... Uh, I mean, he can, because he's alone now. Cannot turn the scheme around anymore. Glorious charge for the memes, just why not. And GG well played. I hope you like this one, guys. Rohan uh, with, uh, you know, Rohira marches. Then we have Gonzo Ally, who is getting normal Gondo Knights on the field. So you have mobility, firepower, you can hit and run. And I like generally the mobile factions. G Victory is, guys, as you guys know. And if you was enjoying this content, you know what to do, guys. You need to just leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this. Look, our money. We had so much money, actually. Isengard had more money than us, but that's fine. He killed lots of units, lots of buildings. I mean, punch up high, what you're doing there. Again, make sure to subscribe to the channel, please, guys. And I see you next time. Take care of yourselves and stay beyond standards. Peace.